Percy Beatty, regarded as one of the top composers in the gospel music industry. Percy has been involved in over 26 platinum and gold selling records. This Grammy and stellar nominated Dove award winning artist has worked with R&B acts such as Dionne Warwick, Michelle Williams, Michael McDonnell, and Whitney Houston, just to name a few. Percy also wrote a string of hits performed by gospel acts such as the Thompson Community Singers, The Winings, BB and CC Winings, Yolanda Adams, Fred Hammond, Daniel Winings, Marvin Sapp, Bishop Paul Morton, Smokey Norfolk, also co-writing the mega hit I Believe I Can Fly with R. Kelly. Hello, this is another episode of The One Mike Show, and today I have my good friend, producer, keyboardist, I mean, he does it all, Percy <laughs> Beatty. My man. Man, how you doing today? I'm good, I'm all good. All right, man. all right. Good to see you. Hey, man, um, I don't even know where to start. This guy is so talented. Um, I, I'm going to hit you with something that's going to blow your mind. Okay. Me and my wife actually got married off of your song. And uh, come to find out that you wrote the song with BB. Yeah. Love uh -huh. said not so? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> you have no idea how the words of that song met me. Oh, okay. Because at the time, I was single. I was a single father at the time. And I didn't think I was going to get married anymore. Oh, wow. I didn't, I didn't think love was for me. Wow. I, okay. It just, yeah, and uh, and I, was, I listened to the words of that song, and it just, I said, wow, this is me. So when we got married, we actually, um, I actually sang to my wife, sang that song to my wife. Oh, that's good stuff. Yeah. That's good stuff. Yeah, she had to bear through my singing, but. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, man, let's get into it, man. Okay, all right. Music. I know, I know you come from a talented family from your dad on down. Tell me how it started for you. Um, it started for me at a very early age. Um, I started, my mom said I started when I was three. I remember when I was six. Okay. Uh, kind of hard to remember when you're three. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's kind of hard to remember <laughs> that. But my mom said I was, you know, doing some things that said that, that something musical was going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I was six years old, I remember being in the store the, uh, before Walmart and all the, you know, Target. There yeah. was there was Zares. Yes, sir. Yeah, Zares. Zares. Not yes, a lot sir. of people. A lot of yeah, people yeah. wouldn't remember Zares. Yeah, yeah. If you're under forty, you don't know about Zares. <laughs> so I was in Zares, and and uh, we went down an aisle um, that had like little electronic stuff, mm -hmm. little keyboard or something. Right. And I went over to the keyboard and started messing with stuff and humming. Was it that little battery operated Casio? No, it wasn't a Casio. Uh -huh. It was it was it was called. Uh, magnum opus. Ah, it was like a little, yes. little organ thing. Yes, yeah. I remember that. And um, so I start messing with that man. I remember vividly that because uh, later that year I got it as a Christmas present. Okay. Wow. Know? So I remember that. I vividly remember that. Um, and that was kind of my start, man. It was always um, um, music. You know, was always something that I, that. Um, I was always driven to. Right. You know, it wasn't something I was made to do. It was right. something I was told to do. I was always driven. I'd wake up and be like, hey, you know, hearing hearing melodies or, yeah. and that type of thing. It was calling you. Yeah, it was calling me to the point where, you know, if we were watching TV, I would cut the TV down when commercials came on and, and play my own music to the commercials. I would say, oh, hey, cool. I would say, hey, this is what I hear here. Or if I heard music, I would say, doesn't that sound kind of dark to you guys? Or doesn't it sound green? It mm. sounds yellow. Wow. I would, com you know, you I would com compare, it to you know, colors. The, the, the notes that I would hear, the music to colors. Yes. Yeah. Wow. You know, and it's and funny. That's what we call it when you're adding the strings and you're adding the, that's we call right. it the colors. Call it colors. That's yeah. right. That's right. Wow. But it's also true. Um, in my studies, I found out that the higher you go, on a piano, on a real, you know, grand piano, the higher you go, um, as you go higher, the sound, the sound turns to light. Yeah. 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 So, 
um, you know, when you talk about colors and things of that nature, it's actually, there's a lot more to it than we really, you know, we really see on the right. surface. Right. You know? I, I could see that. Mm -hmm. I could see that with my ear. Right. Yeah. Right. I got mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Got you. You know, um, I, I got to get this in on the front end before I forget it. Your brother Ray mm -hmm. um, was is kind of a silent godfather to my daughters. I know I'm dropping a. Oh wow! When he came out with his project, which you produce, right? Mission Kob. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, we were doing. I had a little project out at the same time. We met up at a record store, and we wound up spending half of the day together. And Ray is just. Does he work with school kids or something? I think Ray's gifting and his calling. Although it, 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 it's definitely music and, mm -hmm. and, and that, you know, uh, but, um, you know, Ray, his his true calling and gifting, man, is really with young this generation of young yeah. folks. Yeah. He's yeah. pastoring young folks right now. Wow. That's what he's doing. He's, wow. He's a youth pastor at uh, Windsor Village Church down in Houston, Texas. Oh, wow. And Ray probably has about a thousand kids. Every Good season. grief. It didn't just start. I want y'all to know it didn't just yeah, he's start. Been doing it for a while. He's been doing it for a while. When his project dropped, the same thing and and he would go he would say, Come say hello to Uncle Ray to my daughter. So when his project came out, of course I had to buy it. <laughs> and every time we got in the car, my daughters made me play that <laughs> CD. <laughs> I got I, I played it so much till I got I was like, please y'all find another. Play Uncle Ray's CD. And it's just funny that, wow. that yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. As you guys heard on the opening credits, um all of the artists that uh you've you've worked with. And um, if, if you don't mind, just name a few because people just want to know. It's it's not that you're being, and I know you're a quiet person. You laid back, and mm -hmm. you've done way more than people know about. Mm -hmm. but people are just curious about Percy, man. Man, just name some of the people that you've worked with. Well, I got my start with Milton Brunson and the Thompson Community Singers. Yes, sir. Staple. Uh, that was uh, that was my foundation. Right. And from there, I started with uh, the Winans. Mm-hmm. Um, now, when you say the Winans, Marvin, Carvin, Ronald, and Michael. The brothers. The See, brothers. A lot of people don't know that. They just think yeah. BB and CC. No, no, no. I started with them first. Wow. Then I went over to BB and CC and then Daniel Winans. Wow. So I worked with all of them. You know? So when you say BB and CC, did you play? Did you write? I was, I was playing. I was writing. I was a musical director. Wow. Um, Co-producing mm -hmm. things, um, all of that, man. Um, uh, Marvin actually was probably uh, Milton was my foundation, but Marvin was my teacher. Yeah. In that, uh, when I started playing uh, for the Winans, Marvin, we would go on these van rides mm -hmm. where all of us on a van. Right. We only fifteen passenger van. And we may be going from Detroit to South Carolina. Right. Some crazy. In a 15 passenger Yeah, in a 15 man. passenger. So you got guys sleeping on the floor, yeah. somebody foot in your face, and, you know. <laughs> and Marvin would drill me on my, he would like drill me on my songs. We would have song battles. Wow. Where he would sit at the piano. Having like a, we was song in a song battle with Marvin Wines. Right. We would sit in a sound check. That's like we me would trying be, to play Michael Jackson and... Right. I mean, or exactly. Michael Jordan in right. basketball. I never, trust me, I never felt like I, I, I matched up until one day he said something to me. Um, somebody asked him about who was his, um, who was one of his, who was one of his favorite writers. Mm -hmm. And he said my name. Wow. So, um, from the Marvin Winans. From the Marvin Winans. But. I, I went to the Marvin Winans school. Yeah. You know, Marvin break you down. Hey, oh, yeah. what would you what did you what were you saying here? What did yeah. you mean here? Well, you know, this this doesn't really fit here. This isn't tie here. This is this is not simple enough for people. You don't want people to you know have to think about it because the longer they think, you lose the you know, you lose their attention. Mm -hmm. right. I met Andre Crouch through my cousin, Terry Cummings, the basketball player. Yeah. I didn't know Terry was your cousin. Yeah, that's my cousin, man. Wow. I met the Winans through Terry. Okay. That's how I met the Winans. Yeah. Terry came and did a revival at my dad's church, and um, amazing stuff happened the whole week. Healings, miracles, all kinds of things happened. Uh, revival was over, and uh, 
brother, he came to me, he said, hey man, I'm going to send for you once I get out to California. And I'm thinking, yeah, he's right. about to be a yeah, big gone. NBA basketball star, you know. And, and sure enough, man, he sent for me. Wow. I that went from where? the west side of Chicago, mm -hmm. literally, to San Diego, where he was drafted with the Clippers at the time. Right. Two days later, we're driving to L.A. to go to a studio session with Andre Krauss, the Winans, Howard Smith, Bill Maxwell, Bill. Uh, Scott V. Smith. All of these, all of these heroes giants. to me, giants yeah. that I've been studying because I'm looking at credits. I, you know, I, I was a credit guy. Right. Yeah. But I ended up in the studio with them two nights later. And my cousin says to the wine, say, my cousin plays. He, he plays. You guys should hear him play. So Marvin takes us out to the piano. We go to the piano in the studio and Marvin starts singing and I start playing. And so the rest is history. They were like, hey, man, come go on tour with us. Wow. And that's that's how that happened, man. That is, man, that's awesome. Yeah, that so, is. you know, to finish up your question, because I didn't mm -hmm. finish, I'm sorry. So it was the Winans, B.B. and C.C., Daniel Winans, right. Yolanda Adams, Fred Hammond. Fred yeah. Hammond was actually after the Winans because Fred had just left the Winans and right. was starting his own He played thing. bass for he the Winans. He played right. bass for the Winans. Right. So <clears throat> Fred did a solo record, um... And his first solo record, um, I did a song, I did a few songs on that record, but one that uh, that you would probably remember was I'm Not Afraid. Yes. So I did that song on Fred's record. So from You Fred, did I'm Not Afraid? Yeah, that was me. You know what I was listening to that's in my car right now? What's that? I'm Not Afraid. Are you kidding? I kid you not. Marvin Sapp. Yes. Not the time, not the place. Uh, Colorado Mass Choir, right. Angelo and Veronica, mm -hmm. Yolanda Adams, mm -hmm. um, Bishop Paul Morton. Yeah, yeah, you um, did a lot of stuff with, yeah, with Bishop I did Paul some, Morton. I did the Bow Down record with mm -hmm. the full gospel, and then I did Another his great solo song. record, uh, Bishop's solo record, and then um, uh, Smokey Norfolk. Yeah. Um, and then uh, co wrote I Believe I Can Fly with R. Kelly. You know, for instance, Smokey Norfolk's song, I Understand, which was a radio hit. Oh, yeah, him. big radio hit. Um, so I was I Believe I Could Fly. Yeah, yeah, big, yeah, it don't yeah, get any bigger yeah. than that. No, it don't get bigger than I Believe I Could Fly. Yeah. But I, I had no intention of anybody hearing I Understand, because I Understand was a personal song. Wow. It was me yeah. having a conversation with God. Um, at the time, I was living in a two-bedroom apartment with my wife, my two kids, and my wife's two nieces. Wow. And we were all in there together. Yeah. And the living room was my studio. Wow. You know, and I'm yeah. like, God, I done worked for all these people, did this, that, and yeah. look at me. Look at me. You know, mm. so it was a conversation piece. Right. And um, I ended up sharing it with Smokey, and, and he just, he like, I got it. I got to have it. That's my, give it I got to have it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and, uh, Glad I gave it to him, yes, <laughs> you know? Yes, yes, He's an incredible talent, incredible voice, mm -hmm. and, and great interpreter. And yeah. that's what songwriters want. They want people who can interpret yeah. um, the music. Yeah. And then you did your own CD. Mm -hmm. I have a copy of it here. Sure, sure. Kingdom. Now, that's not the first one, though. Right, I know. All right. But this was the latest one. Right, Kingdom. that's the latest. Kingdom Biz, right. Still, you can still get inspirations. You can still get that. You can still get this hard copy or you can get it on download. Okay, uh, iTunes, iTunes, Amazon. Am you guys know what to do. Mm -hmm. what you know, sometimes we we're used to our our own. We're used to our homegrown. And I remember years ago doing media for the Stellar Awards, and uh, we met, met down there. Mm -hmm. We've we've I've, we've been in so many conferences together where he's sure. on the dais giving. You know, to new artists uh, that's coming out, him mm -hmm. giving information. But I remember some years ago, this was back when it was in Nashville, and um, I was backstage with with Kurt Franklin, Mary Mary, you know, and so Percy's coming up, and you know, and and I know Percy personally, but sometimes we don't understand the reach that other people have, mm -hmm. and so you were coming up, and I'm thinking I'm going to introduce my friend to Kurt and <laughs> uh, yeah and Kurt sees him across the room Percy hey man and, and Mary Mary and, and I mean everybody's just know know you on a first name basis man yeah. 
So you got a lot of respect in the industry. You know, it's funny. Um, I don't, I don't really care anything about being up front, right. being in the limelight, man. That's all God. That's that's a, that's His doing. And and um, my dad used to say to me, he used to say, "Son," he said, "I gave you my name. Keep it clean." Where do you think, in particular, gospel music? Where do you think gospel music is headed? Um. Well. Um, I think it's headed back to where it came from. Okay. It has to. It's you can only you can only stretch so far uh before uh a rubber a rubber band will pop back. Break. It'll or to break. Yeah. And in this instance, uh, as it relates to what we what we do in, in Christendom in mm -hmm. turn as it relates to music, um We've gotten away from um, the importance of the message of the song, mm -hmm. and we've made the vehicle more important than the passenger. I can understand that. You know, mm -hmm. so and when did the vehicle become more important to the to the passenger? Nobody gets in a car accident and people run and say, "Hey, man, let's make sure the car is okay." Right. Let's check the bumper. Yeah. Nobody right. does that. Right. You come and you check and see if the the person who's driving or the passengers. You make sure they're okay. Mm -hmm. And I think we have to get back to um, what we, where we come from. And that's the Andre Crouch, the Walter Hawkins, um, those songs that were um, meaningful, yeah. had substance. Mm -hmm. This is true. To, mm -hmm. It spoke to us. You know, and, and that leads me to this also because, you know, and a lot of people get upset when I say this, but not everybody's a worship leader. Oh, this is that's so true. And so, you know, you got this wave of worship that's going on. And mm -hmm. that's it's good because that's what we're called to do. We are right. called to worship. But not everybody is a worship leader. Yeah. So now they have what you call a worship artist. I'm a worship artist. Artist, right. So right. worship leader I get. Right. Worship artist. What is a worship artist? Yeah. So I guess they're saying that they're called to be a worship artist as it relates to a recording artist. Yeah. So what's next for Percy Beatty in the music industry? Um, what's next is um, I'm 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 diving more into um, I'm going back to the beginning. That's what I'm doing. Okay. I'm going back to to how I started. Um, and that's uh, developing, uh, spending some time developing some artists. Okay, good. Um, pouring back into to artists, um, as well as uh, launching. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to launch a label, I think. Next oh, year. that is cool. Yeah. If anybody can do it, you can. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> I received that. Yeah, because, I mean, you got, you got all the aspects. You, you're used to contracts. You're used to. You've had to sign them. You know what's right. You, mm -hmm. You've you've bumped your head. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know it from an artist standpoint, standpoint. That's right. A musician standpoint. That's right. You know a management standpoint. Producer. You, producer standpoint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So who better? Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think that's that's a, uh, and and I'm doing it because I feel like I'm being pulled in that direction. Right. And I'm, I see a hole, and my dad used to always say, "He said, man, when you see a hole, plug it." Yeah. You know, and he said, don't don't let it suffer. Mm -hmm. He said, go plug. If you know you can help, go help. Right. Uh, a lot of things I've done along in my career, it wasn't it wasn't always about money. I didn't get paid for it. Right. I did it because I saw a need, and I plugged in. Yeah. You know, a lot of the early records that I produced, I didn't get paid money yeah. to produce them. Yeah, you we know, know about that. Uh, <laughs> hey, I know you, you know, played a lot for free. Yeah, played yeah. places for free, man, mm -hmm. and and um, so it's it's um uh, it's important. It's important. And so you you you're working on that. You're an MD with Pastor John Hanna. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, What's sir. the name of that little church over there? Uh, New Life. <laughs> New Life Covenant. <laughs> New Life Covenant Church, man, yeah. out in the Grand Crossing area. Yeah, doing yeah. big things. I, yes, I, I'm so proud of him, man. Yes, I, I, every time I see a blurb or anything, mm -hmm. I just get excited because, you know, I, I remember when it started. You yes, know, sir. And yes, I remember sir. him 
probably I've been knowing him about 30 years, mm -hmm. the family and everything. So, mm -hmm. you know, great mm -hmm. things over there. Yes, sir. Yes, you got sir. a great music staff over there, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God has blessed us, man. He's been faithful, you know. Um, um, I start naming names. I'll be forgetting, but... Uh, we got an incredible, incredible worship leader, mm -hmm. uh, Valencia Lacey. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah. doing some wonderful things, man. Um, you got uh, Calvin's over there, Calvin? Sure, Calvin Rogers, Maurice Fitzgerald, uh, Derek Swole, Ray, Rodney East, Danny Waring, Lawrence Jones. Yeah, I know You're that kid. You're Lawrence Jones. You know that kid. <laughs> I know that kid. Uh, Zachary Durvis. Yeah. Uh, Bill Hazel, man, and uh, Larry Roberts Jr. Oh, that's my my cousin. Mm -hmm. And then Will Nixon, Willie Nixon. So and one uh, thing I know been about blessed, Pastor man. John Hanna is his heart. His heart is for God and his people. Yes, sir. And yes, you sir. know, it, everything else is just to sure up that. Yes, sir. So I like the fact that he's so out of the box with his thinking and his ministry because it's working. Yes, sir. Serving yes, sir. the community. Yes, sir. And 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 the thing is, is that. You know, um, he's comfortable in his skin. That's yeah. what I like. He, right. You know, he yeah, just because it was done another way yeah. does not mean it can't be done another way. Exactly. You know, and, mm -hmm. and so I like he understands, you know, that, that God has given him a unique way mm -hmm. of speaking to a generation right now. Right. And uh he that unapologetically does yeah. what God has called him to do. Mm -hmm. And it's even that's even a word to us to understand the importance of what God has called you to do, mm -hmm. you know, that you do it. Because he didn't create another you. Right. He only made it one you. Yes. And uh, it's important that you be authentic. And, and that's even as it relates to, you know, the music with these artists. Right. You know, we got one, Kirk Frank. Yes. You know, you we, be you. You just be you. If I can go back and tie something into the music, because yeah. there's a lot of guys out there with, with production companies, there's writers, there's musicians. Mm -hmm. And remember, you know, earlier in one of our earlier conversations, we were talking about how everybody is doing some. You, you made a, a thing about a car. You know, somebody's over here, he does in engines, and over here, he oh, makes sure. doors. Sure, sure. You put it all together, you sure. have a car. Mm hmm. Uh, your your mom told you that, mm -hmm. you know, Chaplin was, Willie Barrow. Was okay, about, Chaplin yeah. Willie Barrow. You mm -hmm. said that, mm -hmm. but you know, knowing that you're going to be doing a label, mm -hmm. producers, writers, you know, you know, people ask me used to ask me that all the time. Why don't you do a label? I says I'm not because I don't want to do a label. It's not my calling. I'll be honest, I don't want to do yeah, it either. But but you but you're called to it. Yes. But I can support your label. Amen. And that's my point mm -hmm. to the artists, the singers. If you want to be a singer, if you want to be a musician, you know, we'll stay in contact via mm -hmm. social Amen. media, whatever. Yeah. And whenever we'll follow your progress. And when you okay. launch, you know, you know, you know, somebody has an act or somebody has a, a artist or a musician or whatever. That's the way it's done. Mm -hmm. You know, so everybody don't have to go and try to open up a label. It's, it's never going to work. So we can get behind you. And we can, we can help you do your label. You are speaking the the genesis of what I have been studying, and that is the importance of becoming one. Yes. Getting behind one vision, one dream. Right. Anything that has any any situation that has two heads is a monster. Yeah. So you gotta at some point believe enough in something. To be willing to put your all behind it. Mm -hmm. uh, when Pastor came along, man, I wasn't. I was at home. I wasn't in church. Yeah. Man, I was church hurt. Right. Church burnt. Yeah. Church tired. Yeah. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> and I kind of know a little something about that. <laughs> yeah. Pastor yeah. came and got me, man, and said, "Hey, man, look, I'm getting ready to launch, but don't come and do nothing. Just come and Just get come healed. In. Yeah. Come and let God speak to you and." And whatever, whatever the Lord says for you to do, mm -hmm. he said, you'll have an opportunity to do it here. That is great, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut it off right here because, man, me and, me and this gentleman here can talk forever and a day. But <laughs> give me this word that you will come back and perform something 
Just I will do like, that. You will do that? I'll do you can that. come back any way you want to. You want to bring me my other musicians? Fine. You want to just come and just play a piano? Sure, sure. But whatever you want to do in your sure. own way, you will come back. I'll do it. Y'all heard you that. got my word. All right. <laughs> hey, this has been, again, another episode of the One Mic Show with my good friend, Percy Beatty. Until next time, peace. Peace.